students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a superb week and I hope you're all on to a great weekend. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Uh, students, this is an IELTS task to writing class. Uh, we're going to finish this essay that we started yesterday uh, called Computer Driven Cars. This was a question asking about whether or not self-driving vehicles, computer driven cars are an advantage or a disadvantage. And if you missed that class, don't worry because we will quickly review the introductory paragraph before going on to the body paragraphs and the conclusion. This is um, a members chat class. The date is March 18th. To join this chat and to practice your writing and get some feedback, make sure to become a member of the channel. Uh, Rajbir Singh, nice to see you back on board. Hi, Saeed, Cass, Jenny, Osg, good to see many students already in the class. Uh, students, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, definitely that's the place to go. For general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. On both of these websites, we have tons and tons of materials to help you improve for your next IELTS exam. Simply click this big red button to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. And as you can see, we're a certified British Council IELTS test registration center and certified agents. So you're in good hands with us for GILTS. It's the green background at gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button there. And we still have a couple of days left on this special discount code, which is one band up because we believe that you can improve by at least a band score when you use our materials. So put that code in there and then you're good to go. So that's how you do it, students. Um, all right, uh, let's get back to a couple of points here. So uh, again, um, our apps, Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help, those apps link to the websites for improved learning, and then Instagram is IELTS underscore AE help and GLTS help. So check out Instagram for sure. Join us. Use the discount code. Uh, we've got a few more classes uh, this week. So today, two classes and then two more classes tomorrow. If you have any questions, uh, send me an email. You'll see right up there uh, my email address, adrian at aehelp.com. So this was the IELTS writing task two question that we started tackling yesterday. And we started planning and uh, we figured out the structure and now we're on the writing part, okay? So let's just uh, read the question one more time. And if you're ever practicing writing and you're doing an essay uh, and you're writing the essay in two sessions or maybe even more sessions. I think a good way to start is always by rereading the original question. So, you know, just take your time, go step by step, uh, read the question. So here, um, let's read this together. You should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Scientists predict in the near future, cars will be driven by computers, not people. Do you think it is a positive or a negative development? Give explanations and examples to support your opinion, write at least 250 words. Okay, so we started doing that uh, yesterday. Uh, we started to write our essay. Oh uh, yeah, by the way, daylight saving students. So if uh, you notice that the time changed a little bit, it's because of daylight savings. So this is what we did yesterday. Here is our work. Um, and those of you who were in yesterday's class will remember this. So just a quick 
brief review. Uh, the topic here is about computer driven cars. And the uh, controlling idea is whether or not this is a positive development, right? And a key word here is or. I think one mistake that many students might make here is that they'll write about both sides, why computer driven cars are negative, as well as a positive, which is, first of all, it's not necessary because the question is asking you whether it's positive or negative. It's not asking you to discuss both views. It doesn't tell you or ask you to write about both sides. Some questions do. Okay, and in that case, you, you need to write about both sides, but in this case, it doesn't. And as we discovered yesterday, there really aren't that many uh, negatives to having computers drive cars instead of humans. So um, it's better to just focus on one side here. Positive is the easier, better side, okay. All right, so we went through the, uh, the motions of critical thinking and uh, we asked what, why, how about this topic and controlling idea, okay? And basically uh, the main points, the main benefits of having a car that's driven by computer safety, there are less accidents, um, efficiency, so they're highly efficient and we'll discuss why and they're cheaper um, it allows people to enjoy the uh, commute or the transportation more they don't have to worry about controlling the car okay so we ended up with an introductory paragraph the introductory paragraph has a hook it has background and it has a thesis so the hook reads, uh, many companies are racing to develop computer-driven automobiles. In the background, these robotic vehicles controlled by, purely by hardware and software, instead of human operators, will revolutionize transportation and civilization. The development of computer-driven cars is a great benefit to humanity, not only because of improved safety, but also because of it increased efficiency. Notice the parallel grammar here, students. So improved safety, increased efficiency. And that's what you need to have in a good thesis statement. Okay, so in a good thesis statement, you have to have clear points and they have to be parallel grammar. So you can't have like um, an adjective noun as point one and an adverb verb as your point two. That's inaccurate writing. So according to standard writing, you need to have parallel grammar. Okay, so now we get into body paragraph one, okay? In body paragraph one, we'll start with a topic sentence, okay? It will have an explanation or maybe even two, okay? Um, it will have an example and then a connecting concluding sentence. All right, and again, this is just a review for some, but a topic sentence. In this case, refers to the topic of point one. So it's not the topic of the essay, but it's the topic of point one. So it is a deeper a definition of your first thesis point. Okay, so give more clarity to your reader on your first thesis point. So here, our first thesis point is uh, improved uh, safety. Okay, so what do you mean by improved safety? All right, welcome on, Baljeet. Welcome to the class. Okay, good. Um, so, give me a sentence here about computer driven cars increasing safety on the road. You don't need to explain it yet. You just need to tell the reader in a clear way 
um, what that means, all right? So here we go. I'm going to do this. You can do this. And I think here we have a lot of options. So there's a lot of different ways to express these ideas. Focus on putting together uh, grammatically accurate sentences that are clear, okay? So Okay, I'm going to keep it quite simple here. So cars that are controlled by software can reduce um, both the number and severity of motor vehicle accidents worldwide. Okay, so um, when we're talking about improving safety, we're basically saying that, well, when computers drive cars, there will be less accidents. And um, another point that comes to my mind is probably the accidents, for the most part, will be less severe, okay? So Rajveer uh, states, for the topic sentence, this is Rajveer here, uh, good to see some writing from you, Rajveer. We haven't seen your writing in a while, so it's nice to see you back practicing. Um, a prime benefit of autonomous automobiles is that it reduces road mishaps by a great extent. Yeah, um, Rajveer, it's good. I like the word prime benefit and I like the words autonomous automobiles. Autonomous is basically means self-driving, so it's a very nice piece of vocabulary, um, is that it reduces road mishaps. Um, Instead of mishaps, I would write uh, collisions, okay? So automobiles, they collide. So collisions is a better word maybe than mishaps, okay? Um, to a great extent. Okay, so prime benefit of autonomous automobiles is that it reduces road collisions to a great extent. All right, okay, not bad, not bad at all. Somewhat similar. Okay, Baljeet, I can see that you're already uh, writing what looks like an explanation because these cars sense objects in front of them and it is safer. Um, for the explanation, sure, but I don't see your topic sentence, Baljeet. Okay, so make sure to do that. Uh, this is um, the sentence by Saeed, and I'm just grabbing these sentences from the chat, everyone, if you're wondering where this is all coming from. If you're looking at the chat, you will see these sentences. You will see that Saeed has just written this, okay? So, uh, computer-driven cars can clearly benefit the safety of drivers uh, by decreasing the number of accidents on the road, okay? Uh, computer-driven cars can um, clearly benefit... Uh, here I would uh, change the order of words a little bit, Saeed, to make it better. So clearly, uh, so cars can clearly benefit uh, drivers uh, and then put the apostrophe after the S to show your uh, possessive noun for plural so plural possessive noun here Said drivers safety okay it's more concise and smoother to read this way so computer driven cars can clearly benefit drivers safety by decreasing the number of accidents on the road then it's good okay Right, so watch those possessive nouns, okay? 
All right. Uh, let's take one more before we go to the explanation. So this is um, Mal. Uh, Mal writes, one benefit of developing a self-driving, self-driving here is hyphenated, it's joined into one word. So one benefit of developing a self-driving car is the insurance of safety on the road by having an AI in the driving seat. The chances of road accident is significantly controlled or avoided. Okay, I like it, Mal. I think you've got a lot of detail here, just a couple of slight corrections. So the one benefit of driving is, uh, the one benefit of developing a self-driving car is the insurance with an I, uh, insurance of safety on the road, no comma here, by having an AI in the driving seat, the chances of accidents is significantly controlled or avoided. Okay, good, all right. So uh, now our next part is the explanation. Okay, so in the explanation, use logic, use numbers and give a clear reason uh, for your topic sentence, okay? All right, um, so let's do this. Let's do this together, all right? So while it is true, I'm going to write this uh, explanation. You write an explanation. I think, Baljeet, you already have kind of a bit of an explanation going already, so that's pretty good. Um, I think there are a lot of uh, various explanations we could give uh, for our reader of why computer-driven cars are much safer than human-driven cars. Um, and um, and let's do it. Let's, so I'll, I'll write what I think works. Again, you do the same. Try to always focus on the easiest explanation. So when there are you know four, five, six different ways to explain an idea, try to think of, okay, what's the easiest? What's the, what's the one that most people would kind of think of? Okay, so. All right, I'm uh, kind of just flying along here. And when I'm writing such a long sentence, I have to be really careful that I'm not making mistakes. Um, and if uh, it's a run-on sentence, okay, so when you have a sentence that has too much information, uh, it can turn into a run-on sentence. Then I have to you know, break that sentence into more than one sentence. So I have to stop here and check what's going on. Uh, while it is true that software can glitch and this may result, in a vehicle crash. Um, yeah, even after glitch, I should put a comma here. Uh, statistically, the chances are much lower than human error as human drivers are uh, more susceptible. You don't want to write much more often, so I already used the word much, are more susceptible to ignorance, such as speeding, intoxication, and inattentiveness uh, that results in uh, deadly accidents.
Okay. Uh, so that's my explanation, right? Computers, fortunately, don't get drunk. Um, they don't put on makeup while uh, driving. Um, they can be programmed to not drive at 200 kilometers per hour um, to get to their blind date. So um, they are definitely, um, you know, a little bit more collected and focused on one task and one task only, which is driving. Okay, uh, let's see what kind of explanations uh, we have from our members. Uh, here is uh, the explanation by Rashika. So Rashika writes, computer driven cars have great skill of driving, great skill, uh, great, let's do it, let's do it with a little bit of a different order of words here, Rashika. Um, have great uh, driving skills. Uh, students, this is kind of going back to um, the correction here with Said as well. Uh, always check for the order of words and word modification. Oftentimes you can make your writing more concise and clear by just changing the order of words. So your pronouns, um, adjectives, uh, nouns, adverbs, verbs, adverbial clause, okay? So just check the order of the words when you're reviewing, all right? So computer-driven cars have great driving uh, skills compared to people because it's cars, so they are controlled by software, which we don't need the hardware part, Rashika. Remember, if you write some ideas in the introduction or in previous parts of the essay, try not to repeat them, right? So avoid repetition. Uh, because they are controlled by software which allows um, precision for navigating the road to reduce accidents. Okay, let's finish that idea there, Rashika, and then it's much better. Okay, uh, before correction band six, after correction band eight, I would say, okay. So Rashika, it should read, computer-driven cars have great driving skills compared to people because they are controlled by software which allows precision for navigating the road to reduce uh, accidents. Okay, all right. Uh, let's take um, an explanation by Baljeet. Uh, this is what Baljeet has given us for the explanation. Self-driven cars. Self-driven um, is hyphenated. Okay, it becomes one word in this case. Self-driven cars have advanced uh, technological sensors. We don't need that modification because we know that they're technology so have advanced sensors that not sense there's another way to say that bulgy you don't want to repeat words like that sensors that sense uh, sensors that detect okay any object in front of them and take actions accordingly which dramatically help to reduce vehicle collisions on the road okay good you don't need this comma here all right so avoid repeating the words, even though it makes sense, it's just awkward to read sensors that sense, right? So sensors that detect, okay? All right, otherwise good, okay? And one more explanation before we go to the example. Uh, this is by Cass. Okay, Cass writes, and the ideas so far, so Rashika, uh, Baljeet Rajveer, the ideas are good. Okay, I like the ideas. So again, there's different ways to explain here. Okay, uh, this is what Cass writes. 
Although software codes can have technical glitches and may result in car collisions, the percentage of mishaps are much lower than improper driving etiquette, such as drunk driving. Yeah, very good. That's kind of what I said as well, Cass. And nice grammar, nice um, writing here. Uh, that's what I kind of said here with intoxication. So if um, uh, some of you are wondering about what this word intoxication means, Okay, uh, it means, take that off. Um, so it means um, basically drinking and driving or driving under the influence of drugs. So drugs and alcohol. So speeding, intoxication, and inattentiveness. Notice how this list, they're all nouns, right? Speeding, intoxication, inattentiveness, right? Okay, inattentiveness means not paying attention. So that's like texting, or uh, drinking and driving, speeding, right? So now I can uh, come up with an example, okay? Uh, um, and the example should be real world. It should be uh, an idea that your reader can really empathize with, okay? So let's go back up here. Uh, so. Again, first sentence, topic sentence. Next sentence, explanation. Third sentence, example. Make sure your example is clearly connected to your uh, topic sentence and explanation. The example is kind of like the glue that sticks together the explanation and the topic sentence, okay? So think about it like that, okay? It's basically the glue and the emphasis to your argument point, okay? So that's kind of where, so when your reader reads the topic sentence, they're like, oh, okay, all right, that's your point. When they read your explanation, they're like, okay, I'm starting to understand what you're writing. And then when you give your explanation, that's when they're like, oh, okay, so that's how it happens. Now I can agree with you. Right? So that's kind of the, the cherry on the cake, if you will, that makes the, um, the body paragraph appealing uh, to your reader. And it's kind of a funky way to think about it, but um, it is the cherry, it's an idiom here, <laughs> cherry on the cake, uh, that makes your uh, idea, in this case body paragraph, appealing to your reader okay so keep that in mind all right um, so I'm going to write my example here to give you an idea of what I mean by this um, and then um, and then uh, you can come up with your own uh, here the sky is the limit there are probably you know a million different examples that we can choose from make sure it's one that emphasizes and is coherent with your other information in the body paragraph, okay?
All right, um, so there is my example. Indeed, a 2021 report by Google's self-driving automobile engineering team uh, reported that in 2020, there were at least one deadly car accidents among human drivers due to alcohol texting and other important, it's not actually deadly, one serious. Other inappropriate behavior every 100,000 kilometers, while their autonomous vehicles only had minor collisions once every million kilometers. Okay, uh, fun fact, uh, viewers, um, I didn't actually make this up. I did actually read this uh, in uh, an article, and I don't, it's not exact, so I don't think the year, I think, was actually before 2020, but it is an actual fact that uh, human drivers cause one a significant accident every 100,000 kilometers on average. And the self-driving cars that these companies have been testing for about the past six, seven years now, um, they're only causing minor accidents once every million kilometers. So a much, clearly a much, much safer uh, method of vehicle control, okay? Kind of interesting, right? Just think about how many less cases of hospitalization and um, tragedy we will have once we have uh, autonomous vehicles. So I think there was one very famous case where one of these self-driving cars hit a bus, but it wasn't a big accident. And the news was huge because finally one of these cars hit something. It hit a bus. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, that's kind of a fun fact. Notice how I'm not using the first person voice here. So I'm not using the I, me, my here, okay? I'm staying in third person. That's because my whole essay so far is third person. I did not introduce uh, the first person voice in the introduction. So I'm not introducing it later in the essay because that would be strange to now start saying I, me, my. Also notice that um, here at the beginning of my example, I'm not using something like uh, in the New York Times or uh, Harvard statistics, but I'm actually using something that's related, right? Like Google self-driving auto, uh, automobile engineering team or Tesla scientists, right? So when you're saying who is giving this report, try to be specific. So don't just use like some kind of a template. So don't write something like, you know, in the New York Times, it said, it's like, well, really? You're reading the New York Times for self-driving cars? So it's somewhere else, okay? All right, um, let's see, we've got a, some examples here. Uh, we have Cass, let's start with Cass's example. I like the, it looks like a really good start here. So let's, all right. Uh, Cass, I'm going to put it on to your explanation here and we can read it together to check for flow, okay? So, uh, Cass writes, take Tesla Y model as a prime example. In their program, they have a setting called autopilot mode that can be activated for five kilometers. Um, okay, so far it's fine. which can be automatically deactivated after it detects the driver slept for a couple of minutes. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Cass, you're, I think you're referring to the issue of people using the self-driving software in Teslas and sleeping at the wheel. Um, it's a little bit confusing. I don't clearly see how this relates to driver safety. I. I kind of get it, but I, I think I think you can be a little bit clearer with your example, okay? All right, the writing is good, but I think the idea can be a bit better, just my personal opinion, uh, Cass. I, I feel like it's uh, it's the reality, but it's it's a bit, it's like I'm still left with the question of, okay, so how is this helping driver's safety, okay? Um, this is uh, what Rajveer has given us. 
Rajvir writes, uh, for example, the U.S. introduced the self-driving cars built by Tesla in 2021, which enhanced the safety of drivers by reducing the likelihood of severe accidents due to human errors such as texting and intoxications. Yeah, that's good, um, Rajvir, absolutely. Uh, this is where I think numbers can be really helpful, uh, even if you make them up. So even if you make up a fact like um, human error, which is five times more likely to lead to an accident, okay? All right, and then we have our connecting concluding sentence. So after the explanation and the example, we have a connecting concluding sentence. Okay, and this, think about the main idea, the controlling ideas of the, um, of the uh, essay and just reiterate that, okay? So reiterate the, uh, means kind of restate it or paraphrase it if you will. Um, the controlling idea of the essay. Okay, so keep this simple. Don't overthink it. So all you really need to do here is write a sentence like, uh, certainly uh, this is one of several benefits, or this is where you could use the merits, uh, merits for um, having um, self-driving vehicles in coming years, okay? So just like that, all right? Don't overthink it, all right? Now, when you finish a paragraph, uh, you should reread it to make sure that it's sensible and that uh, you don't have any language mistakes like grammar mistakes, for example, okay? So Rajvir writes, this is one of two reasons that autonomous cars are a blessing for humanity. Yeah, Rajvir, that works well. I like the use of blessing, yeah. Um, so here we go. Uh, cars that are controlled by software can reduce both the number and severity of motor vehicle accidents worldwide. While it is true that software can glitch and this may result in a crash, we don't really need vehicle here. We know what we're talking about. Um, statistically, the chances are much lower than human error as human drivers. Okay, so I have human and human here. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can paraphrase that. Eh, no, I can't, so I'm going to leave it. As human drivers are more susceptible to ignorance, such as speeding, intoxication, and inattentiveness that results in deadly automobile accidents. Indeed, a 2021 report by Google's self-driving automobile engineering team reported that in 2020, there were at least one serious car accidents among human drivers due to alcohol uh, texting and other inappropriate behavior every 100,000 kilometers, while their autonomous vehicles only had minor collisions once every million kilometers. Certainly this is one of several merits for having self-driving vehicles in coming years. Okay, that reads quite well. All right, I'm happy with it. It'll get me at least a band A.5 at this point. Um, and then I'm off to body paragraph two. Now, body paragraph two is um, dealing with my second thesis point, okay? So my second thesis point here from the introductory paragraph is increased efficiency, okay? Um, so what do we mean by increased efficiency? And if we think about increased efficiency and how to define it, we can think about um, this uh, or these reasons here, right? Like less time, okay? So you can go to uh, your workplace in less time. 
uh, there's more enjoyment, there's less pollution, it's cheaper, it's roomier. Uh, these are all kind of parts of uh, increased efficiency. Okay, so let's write a topic sentence that explains this. All right, I'm going to pick up a bit of speed here now. So I'm going to be a bit more fluent writing body paragraph two so you can see it evolve. And then um, we'll get to the conclusion in time in this class as well, okay? All right, now this is a plus one. So it's not just simply an in addition, but this is where I would use the uh, leading expression furthermore. Okay. Just give me one second here because it looks like Microsoft Word, thank you Microsoft, is having a bit of an issue. So let's save it and then I'll have to restart this here, which is fine. Just give me two seconds. This will be quick. Okay, there we go. Yep. Ever since I installed Microsoft Office 365, when I had an earlier version, it worked better. Um, all right, let's save it. Okay, so body paragraph two. By the way, if you ever have any technical issues uh, during the IELTS, immediately inform the invigilators, okay? I have heard about that from students, technical problems uh, during the listening or during the uh, writing, reading, uh, immediately let them know uh, whether it's a hardware issue like your headphones stopped working or a software issue, okay? They're also using, I think, Microsoft, so <laughs> problems can't happen. Um, all right, uh, so body paragraph two, furthermore, okay, this is where I would use furthermore because it's a plus one, all right? Um, so furthermore, autonomous cars um, enable humans, uh, instead of humans, let's use individuals this time. I've used humans a lot, so try to pay attention, okay? Yeah, Kuak, in the listening section, you should have headphones, absolutely. Uh, especially for the computer-based exam. So furthermore, autonomous cars enable individuals to uh, use their time and money more effectively. Okay, and then comes my explanation. When a person is not required to control the car, this frees up time to focus on other activities uh, during uh, commutes to work, such as answering uh, emails. In addition, um, robotic cars can uh, replace having to go to stores um, for groceries and other errands. Um, so that people can use this time to make more money or spend with their uh, family. Okay, so I'm just kind of thinking through here, visualizing, okay. Um, indeed, did I use indeed in my previous example? Yes, I did, so I don't want to do that again, okay. In the uh, same article from Google, as previously mentioned, the scientists claim that 
once computer driven cars have um, become popular worldwide, the average person will spend five hundred hours less each year on uh, driving a car okay um, so again I'm using the same example I'm relating to the previous example this creates further cohesion and coherence in my writing okay so if you can connect your examples that's great right so furthermore Autonomous cars enable individuals to use their time and money more effectively. When a person is not required to control the car, this frees up time to focus on other activities during commutes to work, such as answering emails. In addition, robotic cars can replace having to go to stores for groceries and other errands so that people can use this time to make more money or spend with their family. In the same article from Google, as previously mentioned, don't need that comma, uh, the scientists claim that once computer-driven cars have become popular worldwide, the average person will spend 500 less hours each year on driving a car that can be used for other endeavors. Yeah, instead of endeavors, let's go with activities. Okay. All right. Um, so that looks good. I think I definitely have two solid points on why uh, self-driving vehicles are benefiting society. Okay. So now I can write the conclusion. And I see uh, Rajveer Kuak. Um, Kiet Nguyen is asking, what does it mean to free up time? To free up time means to make time available. Okay, so free up time, it means to make time available. Free up time, uh, make time available that would otherwise be uh, scheduled okay so if you're working during the week but you have to go to the dentist then you have to free up time to go to the dentist okay all right uh, Kuak, we don't necessarily need and it could be wordy so I'm not sure where you're looking but it's, it's not always necessary okay all right uh, let's do the conclusion all right so conclusion every good essay should have a conclusion so essays have introduction a couple of body paragraphs and then a conclusion all right um, so the conclusion again has a few parts it has your points restated um, your argument strengthened and a take-home message okay so something to give to the reader so it, it's these three kinds of elements that make a good conclusion points restated just simply paraphrase the points in your essay so that you make it clear for the reader again exactly what you're talking about so in conclusion um, the great benefits to come with um, computer driven cars are safeguarding people and um, uh, making life effective 
or more efficient, but I'm trying to think about a way to uh, grammatically paraphrase that with safeguarding people, okay? Safeguarding people and uh, helping people, um, assisting. Safeguarding and assisting people to live better lives, okay? All right, so I figured it out. Just kind of talked through it, thought through it. So in conclusion, the great benefits to come with computer-driven cars are safeguarding and assisting people to live better lives. Indeed, or definitely, surely. Okay, I'm thinking of different ways to start this because I've already used the words indeed. So surely, um, these are exceptionally advantageous for all people uh, for the millions of motorists across the globe okay All right, um, so that's kind of my argument strengthened because my argument is that it is a benefit. It's not a negative, right, to have self-driving cars. So I'm strengthening that concept, all right? And then I have my take-home message. And members, I can see that you're writing, which is super. It's fantastic. I will take a look at that. So once I finish my conclusion here, I will look at what you are writing for your conclusion here in just a moment. So keep writing those conclusions, okay? Now I have to come up with a clever take home message. So at the end of the day, saving lives, time and money is in the interest of all people. So computer uh, driven cars should be on roads sooner than later. Okay. All right. And uh, think about all those honking horns that you won't have in your city when people are getting angry and honking their horns at each other. Cities will be quieter. Just imagine a world of computer-driven cars that are electric. How much quieter and nicer and more pleasant it will be. Okay, so here is my conclusion. In conclusion, the great benefits to come with computer-driven cars are safeguarding and assisting people to live better lives. Surely, these are exceptionally advantageous for the millions of motorists across the globe. At the end of the day, saving lives, time, and money is in the interest of all people, so computer-driven cars should be on roads sooner than later. Right? I think that's a fair message to give to the readers. Let's get going on these. Let's put them on the road. All right. Um, so Cass, I see you have a topic sentence. Saeed uh, has a conclusion going on here. All right, let's take a look at that, Saeed. And good, Saeed, that you're keeping pace. So writing quickly or practicing writing quickly is important as well. Okay, here we go. This is uh, Saeed with a part of the conclusion. In conclusion, I believe that fully automated cars will definitely have a good impact on society because they will both improve driver's safety and individual's efficiency. Okay, good, Saeed. Um, only write first person, Saeed, if uh, you have done that throughout the essay and you have a good reason to use the first person voice, okay? In this case, I didn't find that necessary. Uh, but maybe you did, and it's 